اليوم راح يكون عندنا التوبيك اللي هو الفنتليتر شيدد ايفنت سيرفيلنس وراح تلقي معنا الدكتوره تبيش عاطف من الاداره العامه لمكافحه العدوى موست ويلكم دكتوره يو كان ستارت ناو ثانك يو دكتور محمد السلام عليكم جود مورنينج ايفري بدي اي هوب اول اوف يو ار فاين Today, our topic of discussion is VAE surveillance. As we all know that mechanical ventilation is very essential for life-saving therapy and for the patients with critical illness and the respiratory failure. Before 2013, it was limited to web alone. Currently, there is no valid and reliable definition of web. The VAE surveillance definition algorithm was implemented in NHSN in January 2013. In this figure, the inter-observer agreement in the web surveillance is shown that out of 20, 50 ventilated patients with the respiratory deterioration, the three different IPs, infection preventionist, they have three different ideas. IP1 said that there are 11 webs. IP2 said that there are 20 webs and IP3 said that there are 15 webs. So this is the problem of subjectivity in with the web. Here are the global web rates. As you can see here that USA web rates are lower as compared to rest of these countries. And it is higher in the surgical surgical ward as compared to the medical ward in USA. You can see here in this graph that the, it is the clinical diagnosis is shown here and the surveillance diagnosis of web is shown here in the red bars. The clinical with the clinical diagnosis web was identified much higher as compared to the surveillance diagnosis. 15% of the ICU patients on the web treatment on the cross-sectional surveys were found web. This is a study of American Journal of Infection Control. There are eight initiatives that misleadingly lowered the ventilator-associated pneumonia rates were shown. And what were those eight initiatives? They were the strict interpretation of clinical signs, a strict interpretation of chest radiographs, seeking consensus between the multiple IPs, infection preventionists, allowing the clinicians to veto the surveillance determinations, requiring Bell for diagnosis, bronco alveolar levage for the diagnosis, setting the quantitative growth thresholds for the endotracheal aspirate and Bell cultures, transfer of patients who require prolonged mechanical ventilation and expand surveillance to include the uncomplicated post-operative patients. Now we will start our VAE protocol. It comes under the patient safety component and device associated module. You will find along with CLAPSI, WAP, CAUTI and dialysis event, VAE is here. You have finished CLAPSI and CAUTI yesterday, and today we will do VAE. The new VAE protocol, as I told you, that surveillance for web prior to 2013 was limited to web. However, there is currently no valid, reliable definition for web, and even the most widely used web criteria and definitions are neither sensitive nor specific. The VAE surveillance definition algorithm is an objective, streamlined, and potentially automatable criteria that identify a broad range of conditions and complications occurring in mechanically ventilated adult patients. So we have stopped doing VAP and we have started VAE surveillance at GDIPC. Recently, pediatric VAE surveillance has also been started instead of VAP. The VAE definition algorithm 
is for use in surveillance. It is not a clinical definition algorithm, and it is not intended for use in the clinical management of the patient. This we have to keep in mind that it is not for the treatment of the patient. It is only used for the surveillance purpose. The, the clinicians will treat the patients in a different way according to the patient's needs and the conditions. And we will work in a different way according to the surveillance definition of VAE. The three tiers of VAE definitions are hierarchical, ventilator associated condition, WAC, infection related ventilator associated complications or IVAC, possible ventilator associated pneumonia or PVAC. So we have the three tiers which we will study in today's lecture, WAC, IVAC and PVAC. VAE definition. VAEs are identified by using a combination of objective criteria. What are these combinations? Number one is deterioration in the respiratory status after a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator. Number two is evidence of infection or inflammation. Number three, laboratory evidence of respiratory infection. So when all these three are present, we label it as VAE. It could be deterioration in this respiratory status after a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator. This will be WAC. It could be together with deterioration and then improvement, the evidence of infection or inflammation. It will be IVAC. And it could be all three, including the laboratory evidence of respiratory infection. It will be PWAC. So we will read them in detail. As Dr. Ayman told you yesterday that what is the surveillance methodology? It is done actively. It is patient based. It is prospective, priority directed or targeted and yield risk adjusted incidence rates are calculated in our surveillance. As he told you that what is active surveillance? We have to go in the ICUs or the units in patient wards to check that how much how much infections are there. If we sit in the office, it will be passive surveillance. It is patient based as our focus is critical care patients only. For the time being in the first phase, it is critical care patients only. It is prospective. We go towards future and we, uh, we search for the infections every day. Our priority is critical care patients alone for the first phase of the surveillance. VAE settings. The inpatient locations which are eligible to participate in VAE surveillance are those adult pediatric locations, adult or pediatric locations where the denominator data, ventilator and the patient days can be collected, intensive care units, specialty care areas, step down units, wards and long term units are included for VAE. Pediatric and the neonatal units are now included in VAE surveillance. Pediatric VAE surveillance locations mapped to mixed age CDC location codes are excluded from the VAE surveillance. What are inpatient locations? Inpatient locations are those locations or the units where the patients are admitted on a different day of date and they are discharged on a different date. So where we can calculate the ventilator days as well as the patient days. These are inpatient locations where we will calculate the VAE rates. And our focus is on the critical care unit only. Surveillance of the ventilated patients. If we compare between WAP and VAE in adult locations, we are not doing any more WAP, but you can monitor it internally if you want. If your administration wants or if you want, you can do it internally, but it is not required by GTIPC. What is required is VAE in adult locations. In pediatric locations, you can do WAP, but pediatric VAE has been added in 2019 in NHSN. In neonatal locations, 
not anymore but you can monitor internally if you want or your administration wants and it has been added in 2019 in nhsn and recently we have added in our surveillance too transfer rule if a vae develops on the date of transfer or the day following the transfer from one inpatient location to another in the same facility or to a new facility where the date of transfer is the day one the event is attributed to the transferring location this is very important that when a patient is transferred the day of transfer or the other day if there is vae it will be attributed to the transferring location on the day of transfer and the next day but if it is on the third day of transfer it will be attributed to the new location this we have to keep in mind for example a patient is on ventilator in surgical icu who has had improving oxygenation for three days, is transferred to the medical ICU, is still on the ventilator. On the day of transfer, after the patient has arrived in the medical ICU, the patient experiences an acute decompensation requiring an increase of 0 0.30 or 30 points in FiO2 that persist during the following calendar day. Their criteria are met on the calendar day two in the, in the medical ICU. Because the onset of worsening oxygenation occurred on the day of transfer to the medical ICU, the VAC event is attributed to the surgical ICU, the transferring location. We will read in detail what is FiO2. The general changes of highest definitions. We have to know. We have to know the infection window period, the date of event, present what is present on admission, healthcare associated infections, what is 14 days repeat infection time frame, or RIT, device removal and reinsertion, secondary BSI attribution period, and the pathogen assignment guidance. We have to know all these terms before we go into detail. These, some of these definitions are not applicable or modified or slightly modified in case of VAE. What are they? The infection window period is modified, the date of event present on admission, HAI or healthcare associated infection, repeat infection time frame, and secondary BSI attribution period. We have to know all these in detail. The infection window period, date of event, repeat infection time frame, device removal and reinsertion, and secondary VSI attribution period have specific changes of VAE definition. Now we will go one by one. The infection window period, it is usually a five days period and it includes two days before the day of and the two days after the VAE event date that is the first day of worsening oxygenation or the day of VAE onset is identified. However, it could be shorter if VAE occurs early in the course of mechanical ventilation. So it is a period of five days, three to five days, and it includes two days before the day of the event and the two days after the VAE event is identified. It could be shorter than five days if the course of mechanical ventilation, the VAE occurs earlier in the course of mechanical ventilation. Suppose it is uh, the VAE occurs in on third, or fourth or the fifth day as compared to the 10th, 11th or 12th days. So the, the infection window period will become shorter as compared to five day period. It will be three or four days. The date of event, the date of onset of worsening oxygenation. This is defined as the first calendar day of the required greater than two day period of worsening oxygenation following a two day period of stability or improvement on the ventilator. First, there should be a baseline period of two days with the stability and improvement on the ventilator. Then there should be two days period of worsening oxygenation. 
so the first day of that worsening oxygenation will be labeled as the date of event i will repeat it again following the two days of period of stability or improvement on the ventilator when there is two days period of worsening oxygenation the first calendar day of two days of the worsening oxygenation is labeled as the date of event it is different than the rest of the date of events in cauti and clapsi the repeat infection time frame a new vae cannot be identified or reported until a 14 day period has elapsed after the day of onset of the worsening oxygenation the event date is day 1 however the period of stability can be diagnosed during the defined 14 days time period it is almost same that the repeat infection time frame a new vae cannot be identified until 14 days have passed the secondary bsi attribution period secondary bsis they may be reported for pvac events but not reported for vac and ivac events provided that the organism identified from the blood specimen it matches an organism identified from the appropriate respiratory specimens like respiratory secretions like pleural fluid and the lung tissue the collection times respiratory specimens have been collected during the 5 day infection window period and the positive blood specimens are collected during the 14 day event period starting by the date of event so secondary bsi attribution period it may be reported only for pvac but not for vac or ivac other related definitions in the cases where pvap is met with only the histopathology criterion and there is a positive blood specimen a secondary bsi is not reported do not limit reporting to just those organisms isolated in culture for example influenza a identified by the pcr in the respiratory specimen and the culture of the blood specimen a secondary bsi is reported for device removal and reinsertion we will go to the episode of mechanical ventilation episode of mechanical ventilation is what it is the period of days during which the patient was mechanically ventilated for some patient some portion of each consecutive day here you will find hospital days mechanical ventilation episode and mechanical ventilation day number you will find here on starting from day 1 till day 6 the patient was intubated intubated here intubated here and stayed intubated till 6th day and then extubated at noon on 6th day 7th the patient was free of ventilator and 8th the patient was reintubated again and stayed intubated for 9th and the 10th days again so there are how many episodes of mechanical ventilation are here here you will find two episodes one episode is here till 6 and second episode is here starting from 8 as one whole calendar day has passed without the ventilator so there are two episodes of mechanical ventilation in this example if not one calendar day has passed it the 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 mechanical ventilation count will continue but here as we can find there is one day free of ventilator free of intubation so there are two episodes of mechanical ventilation episode of mechanical ventilation the period of days during which the patient was mechanically ventilated for some portion of each consecutive day in this example we can see here on 6th day the patient is extubated and then on 7th he is reintubated at 9 pm not one whole calendar day has passed with the patient is free of mechanical ventilation so here you will have only one episode of mechanical ventilation only one episode of mechanical ventilation the patient was re intubated on the calendar day following the extubation on 6th and 7th because there is no one calendar day of mechanical ventilation there is only one episode of mechanical ventilation 
I hope it is clear. In this example, as I have told you already, that mechanical episode one here till six, it is one. And then starting from eight, seven is free of mechanical ventilation. Starting from eight, there is a second episode of mechanical ventilation. In case the patient remains one for one full calendar day off, the VAE clock starts over. The VAE clock will start over. We will again start counting the mechanical ventilation days here. We will end here and then we will stop here and then we will start the recounting uh, from eighth day. In this case, the patient in this case, the patient re-intubated on the calendar day following the extubation on 6 and the VAE clock continues as usual. The earliest the patient could meet VAE criteria would be day 8, assuming the stable or the improving ventilator settings on day 5 and 6 and the two days of worsening oxygenation meeting criteria on day 7 and 8. Here, there are two days of stability or improvement on 5 and 6, and here there are two days of worsening oxygenation on 7 and 8. VAE versus other device associated healthcare associated infections. Here is the item, the device associated highs and VAE. Clepsy, WAP, VAE, CAUTI, and DE. They are device associated, healthcare associated infections. VAE is separate. The infection window period, the infection window period is seven days in case of device associated highs, and it is five days, and it could be shorter as I explained to you earlier. It could be three or four days also. The diagnostic test or the middle of the window is lab specimen collection or imaging. Here, the diagnostic criteria is worsening of oxygenation or the date of event is worsening of oxygen, the first day of worsening oxygenation. The date of event in case of device associated highs is the date the first element used to meet the criteria, device specific criteria. Here, it is first day of worsening oxygenation is the date of event of VAE. Repeat infection time frame is same in both 14 calendar days for BSI, UTI, and WEB, 21 calendar days for the dialysis event. The device removal and reinsertion recount after at least one, de one device day off. One day off device recount after at least one day of device. It is same in both. The secondary BSI attribution period is in device associated highs. It is 14 to 17 calendar days for UTI and web while it is 14 calendar days after the PWEB. Secondary BSIs after CAUTI and web after PWEP only, not after VAC or IVAC, as there is no associated organism in VAC and IVAC. There is no culture done in VAC and IVAC. I will explain to you in detail. Now we have to know what is a ventilator. Ventilator is a device which is used to assist or control the respiration inclusive of weaning period through tracheostomy or by the endotracheal intubation. The lung expansion devices such as intermittent positive pressure breathing, IPPB, nasal positive and expiratory pressure, nasal PEEP and continuous nasal positive air pressure CPAP or Hypo CPAP are not considered ventilators unless delivered via tracheostomy or endotracheal intubation. Example, ET CPAP. The patients on the airway pressure release ventilation, APRV or related modes of mechanical ventilation, example, bilevel, bivent, biphasic, are 
included in VAE protocol, but the VAE period of stability or improvement on the ventilator and the period of worsening oxygenation should be determined by the changes in the FIO2 only, since changes in PEEP may not be applicable to APRV. The oxygenation, we have to read in detail what is the oxygenation. The oxygenation requirement fraction of inspired oxygen or FIO2 positive and expiratory pressure or PEEP, PEEP, PEEP. And then we have to study what happens in hypoxia. Fraction of inspired oxygenation. It is oxygen concentration in percentage and is typically maintained below 0.5 even with ventilation to avoid the oxygen toxicity. The natural air contains 20.9% oxygen, which is equal to equivalent to FiO2 of 0 0.21. 0 0.21. The positive end expiratory pressure or PEEP is the pressure in the lungs above the atmospheric pressure applied by a ventilator. A small amount of applied PEEP, 0 to 5 centimeters of water, is used in most mechanically ventilated patients to mitigate the end expiratory alveolar collapse. In hypoxia, what happens? Worsening FiO2 means increase of FiO2 by 20%. And worsening of PEEP means increase in PEEP by 30 centi 3 centimeters of water. Worsening of FiO2 means 20% increase and worsening of PEEP means 3 centimeters of water. Daily minimum PEEP, the lowest value of PEEP, which is maintained during a calendar day that is set on the ventilator and it is maintained for at least one hour. In the event, the ventilator, ventilator settings are monitored and recorded less frequently than once per hour or where there is no value that is documented to have been maintained for at least one hour, the daily minimum PEEP is simply the lowest value of PEEP set on the ventilator during the calendar day. The daily minimum FIO2. The lowest value of FiO2 during a calendar day and that is set on the ventilator and maintained for at least one hour. In the event, the ventilator settings are monitored and recorded less frequently than once per hour or where there is no value that has been maintained for at least one hour, the daily minimum FiO2 is simply the lowest value of FiO2 set on the ventilator during the calendar day. Here you can find it is recorded every hour, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. The PEEP you will find the lowest is which one? 5, which is maintained for at least 1 hour. The daily minimum PEEP is 5, and FIO2 is 0. 0.5, which is maintained for at least 1 hour, 8 to 9. So it is 0. 0.5, the FIO2. The minimum duration of 1 hour for the lowest value 5 and 0. 0.5 is met in two consecutive readings, here 8 to 9 and here also 8 to 9. So the PEEP, the lowest PEEP is 5 and the lowest FIO2 is 0. 0.5. The daily minimum PEEP and FIO2, here also it is calculated every hour. 8 here also you will find we have 5 but it is not maintained for 1 hour here also we have 5 but 8 is the lowest one which is maintained for 1 hour here you will find 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.8 0. 0.5 is not maintained for 1 hour 0. 0.8 is maintained for 1 hour daily minimum peep is 8 and FIO2 is 0. 0.8 the minimum duration of one hour for the lowest value 5 and 0. 0.5 is not met in the two consecutive readings. The minimum duration of one hour for the next lowest value 8 and 0. 0.8 is met in two consecutive readings. So this is very important. When you have readings every hour, you have to know which one is maintained for at least one hour. Here in this example, 12, then 4, then 8, 12, 4, and 8. It is not calculated every hour. Even FIO2 is not calculated every hour. So you will just 
label the lowest one. So the daily minimum PEEP is 5 and the daily minimum FIO2 is 0 0.40. PEEP and FIO2 are being monitored and recorded every two hours. Therefore, the lowest recorded PEEP and FIO2 for the calendar day is, is the value used in the VAE surveillance. PEEP values of 0 to 5 centimeters will be considered equivalent and worsening of PEEP is defined as increase by at least 3 centimeters of water above 5. If you have 0, it will be counted as 5. If you have 3, it will be counted as 5 and 5 is counted as 5. 0, 3, 5, all are counted as 5. Here in this example, you have found that it is 5 and then it increased by 3 centimeters of water. Days 1 to 4 are considered a stable period of PEEP, even though the daily minimum PEEP increases from 0 to 3 to 5 centimeters of water, as the values from 0 to 5 of water are considered equivalent. 0 to 5 centimeters of water are considered equivalent. So there, is, there are period of 2 days of stability or improvement and then followed by deterioration. So the first day of deterioration, this is deterioration. The first day of deterioration is WAC. So this is WAC. You have to check either PEEP or either FIO2. In either of these two, if you find two days of stability followed by two days of worsening oxygenation, it will be labeled as WAC. Here you will find there is no stability here, but here you can find 0 0.35. 0 0.35 is here on day 3 and then on day 4 it is 0 0.40. It is increasing. It is not stable or not decreasing. And then there is 0 0.70. Here the criteria is fulfilled, but half criteria is fulfilled. 0 0.70 is more than 0 0.20, but here it should be decreasing as compared to the first day. The second day of stability should be decreasing or equal. It should have been 0.35 here also or 0 0.30. Then it would be labeled as VAC. So here there is no event, no VAC. Day 4 is higher than FIO2 on day 3 and therefore it is not stable or decreasing. So no VAE can be diagnosed although FIO2 in days 5 and 6 increased by more than 20%, which is fulfilled. But as these two days of stability are not stable or not decreasing, they are increasing by 5.5 points, so it is not WAC. VAE time frame. The patients must be mechanically ventilated for more than two calendar days to be eligible for VAE. The earliest day on which the VAE criteria is fulfilled is day 4 of mechanical ventilation, where the day of intubation and initiation of mechanical ventilation is day 1. The earliest day of event for VAE, the date of onset of worsening oxygenation is day 3 of the mechanical ventilation. So this we have to keep in mind then the patient that the patient must be mechanically ventilated for at least two calendar days. The earliest day on which the VAE criteria can be fulfilled is day four and the earliest day on which the VAE event can be fulfilled is day three. Now VAE definitions. I hope it is clear up till now. If you have any question, we can discuss at the end of the lecture. Now, what is the high degree as we studied in the start? WAC, ventilator associated condition, IVAC, infection related ventilator associated complication, possible pneumonia or probable pneumonia or PVAC. Let's go one by one. First of all, WAC. WAC ventilator associated condition after a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator, which is defined by two calendar days 
more than or equal to two calendar days of a stable or decreasing daily minimum FiO2 or PEEP values, the patient has at least one of the following indicators of worsening oxygenation. The increase in daily minimum FiO2 of more than 20 points or 0 0.20 over the daily minimum FiO2 in the baseline period and it is sustained for more than equal to two calendar days or increase in the daily minimum PEEP values of more than three centimeters of water over the daily minimum PEEP in the baseline period and it is sustained for at least two calendar days or equal to two calendar days. It is labeled as WEC or ventilator associated condition. Greater than equal to two days of stable or decreasing daily minimum PEEP or FiO2 followed by rise in the daily minimum PEEP by greater than three centimeters of water or FiO2 by greater than 20 points and is sustained for two days. The daily minimum defined by lowest value of FiO2 or PEEP during a calendar day that is maintained for at least one hour. Daily minimum PEEP values of 0 to 5 centimeters of water are considered equivalent for the purpose of VAE surveillance as we have already read this before. Example of WEG. In this example below, the baseline period is defined by the mechanical ventilation days 3 and 4 shaded in the light gray, this ones. Here, there is no stability or improvement. Here, there is a stability in FiO2. There is a stability 0 0.40, 0 0.40. And there is worsening of oxygenation by 0 0.30, shaded in the dark gray, five and six days, fifth and sixth day, where the daily minimum FiO2 is greater than 0 0.20, over the daily minimum FiO2 during the baseline period. So there is, they, the patient is on ventilator for two days, then there is a stability for two days and then worsening of oxygenation, which continued for two days. So the worst day of the worsening oxygenation is WEC. Here it is WEC, ventilator associated condition. The two days of worsening as FiO2 is increased by 30% or 0 0.30. So this is WAC. In example two, we can see here the baseline period is defined by the mechanical ventilation days one through four shaded in light gray and the period of worsening oxygenation by mechanical ventilation days five and six shaded in dark gray while the daily minimum peep is three centimeters of water here you can find first it is zero zero and then three and then five so all of them are equal to five so this is the period of stability and then there is a sudden increase of three points three centimeters of water so it will be labeled as the first day of deterioration will be labeled as WAC. Here you can find it is a stable all the way around, but it should be only at least one of the two, either PEEP or FiO2. There the daily minimum PEEP is greater than three centimeters of water, greater than the daily minimum PEEP during the baseline period. In this example, note that the mechanical ventilation days one to four are considered as baseline, even though the daily minimum PEEP increases from zero to three to five centimeters of water during this time period, because the PEEP values from zero to five centimeters of water are considered equivalent for the purpose of the surveillance. So I hope this is clear. In this example below, this is the same example. This is WAC, example two now, example three. In this example, there is no WAC. Why? Because the FiO2 on mechanical day four is higher than FiO2 on mechanical day three. 35.35 and then increase 0 0.45, 0 0.40. 0. So there is an increase during the stability period. So it is not stable or not decreasing. So there is no event. Other, um, although the second portion is fulfilled, the second criteria is fulfilled, but still because the stability is not constant, so we will not label it as WAC.
no stability actually worsening as FIO2 increased by 5%. Two day period of worsening as the FIO2 is increased by 30%, 30%. But still there is no VAC. Now IVAC. What is IVAC? Infection related ventilator associated complication. There is infection. There is chance of infection and there are signs and symptoms of infection. What are they? On or after the calendar day three of mechanical ventilation and within two calendar days before or after the onset of worsening oxygenation, the patient meets both the following criteria. First, first criteria of VAC should be met and then the temperature greater than 38 degrees centigrade or lesser than 36 degrees centigrade or white blood cell count of greater than 12,000 cells per cubic millimeter or less than 4,000 cells per cubic millimeter. And either of these two, temperature or white blood cells and a new antimicrobial agent is started and it is continued for four calendar days will fulfill IVAC condition infection related ventilator associated complication. First, the VAC should be fulfilled. Second, either temperature or the WBC count criteria should be fulfilled and a new antimicrobial agent is started and it is continued for at least more than four calendar days, equal to or more than four calendar days. Here you can find these are the mechanical ventilation days 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. VAE date. When is VAE? There are two days of stability on 11th and 12th. Then there is worsening of oxygenation on 13th and 14th. So the first day of worsening oxygenation is VAE. During this window period, during this whole window period, if there is a documentation of temperature or WBC abnormality and a new antimicrobial agent is started, started documentation within this shaded period and a new antimicrobial agent is started within this shaded period and then continued for at least four days, it will be labeled as IVAC. This will be IVAC. What is new antimicrobial agent? A new antimicrobial agent is any agent or new antibiotic initiated on or after the third calendar day of mechanical ventilation and in the VAE window period, the agent is considered new for the purpose of this definition if it was not given to the patient during the two days before the window. Before the window, if it was not started, it was only started during the window period and it was continued for four days, it is labeled as QUAD, Qualifying Antimicrobial Day. So there should be four QUADs day on which the patient was administered an antimicrobial agent and that was determined to be new within the VAE window period. A day in which the patient was administered a new antimicrobial agent and it was determined to be new within the window period, VAE window period, it has qualified antimicrobial days or quad, quads. Four consecutive quads are needed to meet the IVAC, to meet the IVAC antimicrobial criterion. The requirement for four consecutive quads can be met with four days of therapy with the same antimicrobial with a gap of no more than one calendar day between the administrations of that antimicrobial or it can be met with four days of therapy with multiple antimicrobial agents as long as the antimicrobial was started within the VAE window period. It could be same antimicrobial and might be there is a gap of one day, it's okay, it's acceptable with the same antibiotic. But if the micro antimicrobials are different agents, so there shouldn't be any gap and it should have been started within the VAE window period. The antimicrobial agent or agents must have been given by one of the rules of administration outlined below, intravenous or intramuscular or that by digestive tract or by respiratory tract. Now the examples, this is the window period 
the shaded one ceftrioxone is started in the window period but it was given before two days also so it is not a new antimicrobial agent meropenem is not given before before the window period so meropenem is a new agent and it is continued for four days it is qualifying four qualifying antimicrobial days are here so meropenem is a new start while ceftrioxone is not as it was given to the patient the day before the five day period so this is not a new antimicrobial start, but meropenem is a new start. Here in this example, ceftrioxone, sorry, ceftrioxone is, ceftrioxone is uh, given before two days, but meropenem, imipenem, piprocillin and tazobactam and piprocillin tazobactam all are given with continuation. So meropenem and piprocillin tazobactam combination are the new start while ceftrioxone is not as it is given to the patient the day before the five day period. So this one is not new, but they are all new. So qualifying antimicrobial days are fulfilled. Here you will find levofloxacin in the window period, then there is a gap of one day, then again levofloxacin is given again a gap and it continued. So because there is a gap of no more than one calendar day between the days of levofloxacin administration, the requirement for the four consecutive quads is met. Same antibiotic can be given with a gap of one day. If same antibiotic is given with a gap of one, uh, with a gap of one day, it will be accepted as quads. But in case there is a gap of more than one day, like in this example, when comycin is given on the second day of the window period, then it was stopped for two days and then restarted again on the on the fifth day. So there is a gap of more than one calendar day between the days of vancomycin administration. So the requirement for four consecutive quads is not met. So there will be no IVAC. In this case, there will be IVAC. If VAC criteria is fulfilled and temperature and WBC criteria are fulfilled and then the quads is fulfilled. So this one will be IVAC and this one will not be IVAC. Now the last one, VAE definition or possible VAP. Possible VAP, one of the three criteria for PVAP, criteria one, positive culture meeting the specific quantitative or semi-quantitative threshold, criteria two, the purulent respiratory secretions or a positive culture not meeting the quantitative or the semi-quantitative thresholds is available. Criteria three, Positive pleural fluid culture, positive lung histopathology, positive diagnostic test for Legionella species or selected respiratory vi viruses are fulfilled. If any of these three criteria are fulfilled and the first VAC and IVAC are fulfilled, then it will be labeled as PVAC. But if VAC and PVAP criteria are not fulfilled, even if any of the criteria is there, these criteria is there, it will not be PVAP. It could only be PVAP once the VAC and the IVAC criteria are fulfilled, then we will go to PVAP. The positive culture of one of the following specimens, endotracheal aspirate, more than 10 raised to power 5 colony forming units per ml or corresponding Semi-quantitative result, the bronchoalveolar lavage of greater than 10 raised to power 4 colony forming units per ml or corresponding semi-quantitative result, lung tissue 10 raised to power 4 colony forming unit per gram or corresponding semi-quantitative result and protracted specimen brush of 10 raised to power 3 colony forming units per ml or corresponding semi-quantitative result is available. So it will be counted as positive culture of one of the following specimens. The purulent respiratory secretions plus organisms identified from one of the following specimens to include the quantitative culture or the quantitative semi-quantitative culture without sufficient growth to meet the criteria one. They might include sputum, endotracheal aspirate, bronchoalveolar lavage, lung tissue, protracted specimen brush. What are the purulent respiratory secretions? They are defined as the secretions from the lungs bronchi 
or trachea that contain greater than 25 neutrophils and less than 10 squamous epithelial cells per low power field. The purulent secretion criteria may be met using the specified quantitative and semi-quantitative thresholds for the neutrophils alone. The white blood cells or the polymorphonuclear leukocytes or leukocytes are equivalent to neutrophils. The purulent respiratory secretions, semi-quantitative guidance from the clinical microbiological procedure handbook, one plus is occasional or rare, less than one cell per low power field, two plus few, one to nine cells per low power field, three plus are moderate, 10 to 25 cells per low power field, and four plus are heavy, greater than 25 cells per low power field. Criteria 3, one of the following positive tests, organisms identified from the pleural fluid where the specimen was obtained during the thoracocentesis and the initial placement of the chest tube and not from an indwelling chest tube, the lung histopathology defined as abscess formation or foci of consolidation with the intense neutrophil accumulation in the bronchioles and the alveoli, evidence of lung parenchyma invasion by fungi hyphae, pseudo-hyphae or yeast forms, evidence of infection with the viral pathogens listed below based on the results of the immunohistochemical assays, cytology and microscopy performed on the lung tissues, diagnostic test for the Legionella species, diagnostic test for the respiratory secretions for influenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, adenovirus, para-influenza virus, rhinovirus, human metanumovirus and coronavirus. This is again the criteria one, two, and three in detail that we have already read. The VAE pathogen reporting. Pathogens are not reported for VAC and IVAC events. Secondary BSIs are not reported for VAC and IVAC events. Secondary BSIs may be reported for PVAC events provided that at least one organism isolated from the blood culture matches with the organism isolated from an appropriate respiratory tract specimen, including the respiratory secretions, pleural fluid, or the lung tissue, as we have read earlier also. There is a hierarchy of definitions within VAE. If a patient meets criteria for VAC and IVAC, report IVAC. If a patient meets criteria for VAC and IVAC and PVAP, report PVAC. VAE is not to be upgraded, that is VAE upgraded to IVAC or IVAC upgraded to PVAP using the data that occurs outside the VAE window period. There are some excluded organisms, what are they? They cannot be used to meet the, P, the PVAP definitions as follows, normal respiratory flora, normal oral flora, mixed respiratory flora, mixed oral flora, altered oral flora or other similar results when isolated from cultures of sputum, endotracheal aspirate or bronchoalveolar lavage or protected specimen brushings, not from the lung tissue or the pleural fluid, they are all excluded. Candida species or yeast not otherwise specified, coagulase negative, staphylococcus species and enterococcus species. Additionally, Organisms typically causing the community associated respiratory infections and are rarely or are not known to cause highs isolated from the eligible specimens, lung and the pleural fluid. These excluded organisms are blastomycosis, histoplasma, coccidoids, paracoccidoids, cryptococcus and pneumocystitis. They are all excluded organisms as they are known community associated respiratory infections. Post-discharge VAE, it is not required to monitor for VAE after discharge if a patient is transferred to another facility while still on the mechanical ventilation. However, the VAE is discovered within the two calendar days of discharge where the date of discharge is day one should be reported and no additional ventilator days are reported. Number of episodes of mechanical ventilation we have already read. Now VAE analysis, how to calculate VAE? VAE rate is calculated by VAE events, number of VAE events by ventilator days times 1000. 
or the VAE events related to APRV by APRV ventilator days times 1000. And for the case of episodes of mechanical ventilation, VAE events by episodes of mechanical ventilation times 100. How the VAE analysis is done for the ventilator utilization ratio ventilator days by patient days, the rates and the ratios are stratified by the type of ICU or the ward type. If you want to calculate VAESIR, observed VAE events by expected VAE events, SIR is a standardized infection ratio. Observed number of VAE are the number of detected VAEs and expected or predicted number of VAEs are number of ventilator days times NHSN VAE rate by 1000. The SIR can be calculated only if the number of expected VAE is equal to or more than 1. Otherwise, it cannot be calculated. Thank you. Do you have any question? Thank you so much, Dr. Tabish, for nice presentation. Uh, dear all, if uh, any question, just 